Hi, welcome back. I'm Professor Don Patterson, and we're in the middle of going through a sequence of videos teaching uh, viewers like you how to make a web application that plays the game Reverse Eye. We've set up some of our development environment, and we're going to do a little bit more technical work in order to enable two browsers to chat with one another across the internet. And in this video, what I want to do is just give an overview of what we're going to build technically. No coding this video. So this is a chat overview. All right, so the key points here are that we need to understand that for two browsers to be able to play a game with each other, they need to be able to send data back and forth somehow. The way we're going to do that is with a server. And we're going to start by making a chat example so that text messages can be sent from one browser to another browser. It'll look a little bit like the Slack instant messaging app. Later, we're going to change it so that these messages that are getting sent from browser to browser aren't text messages that are intended for a user to read, but instead are going to be control messages that one browser is sending to another. So our infrastructure looks like this. We've, we've seen this diagram several times. We've worked with it in a lot of different um, mechanisms, uh, with a lot of different mechanisms. The main thing that I want to shift focus on here is thinking about this um, less, um, be less focused as we think about this on where our files are being hosted and think more about what's happening to the files that are being requested. Right now, our web browser can be here and it can be accessing information from the cloud on Heroku or it can be accessing our development environment. And if we want to sync those up, we can put our development work into GitHub and send it to our repository. When GitHub indicates there's been a change, it'll notify Heroku. And when our web browser wants to access our web application, it will load server.js either from the cloud or from our local computer, depending on whether we're doing development work on our local computer or whether it's ready for everyone to see out on the cloud. The main thing is we can run our application locally or from the cloud. So for the time being, I want to ignore where it's being run from. And let's think for a moment just conceptually about our server without thinking about where it's hosted. We have a web browser that will use one of possibly several URLs or IRIs, in this case, a cloud-based one or a development one. But regardless of what it is accessing or where it's accessing it, it will be accessing a program run by Node called server.js. And this is acting like a web server, like Apache or like Nginx or any other, no, other of a number of different programs that will return content for a web browser that has asked for it from a server. Now, we have a file system, and on that file system, when we request files, right now in our, in our um, demo here, in our, in our tutorial, we have three different files. We have index.html, about.html, and lobby.html. At least these are the content file, the HTML files that we have. We, of course, have server.js also on the file system. We run that. And then we have some assets, some images that we're using to help populate those HTML pages. Three primary HTML pages, though. So when our web browser requests one of those files, it's going to go out to the internet and reach the server, either on our local computer or on Heroku. That server.js program will look in the file system for index.html. If it finds it, it'll load it and then send it back to the web browser. The web browser will look in the contents of index.html and it will render whatever is there. Hello world, our logo, an index field, whatever we've got. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the way our existing demo is running, and we're going to have it work such that when we click on that um, Enter Lobby button that we've already built out, rather than just going to lobby.html and just getting lobby.html file by itself, we're going to add a parameter to the IRI or URL using the question mark, the normal URL syntax. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a key value pair on the end of that URL we're going to request username equals djp3. Now, when the server.js sees that request coming from our web browser, initiated by clicking the button in index.html, it will request lobby.html and not do anything with that IRI. The same file will get delivered. It'll be requested from the file system. Server.js will send it back to the web browser. When the web browser gets it, it will clear out the index.html data, and it will begin rendering lobby.html. Our, our IRI now has this additional information on the end of it, doesn't affect anything about the way our content is being rendered. 
what we're going to do is we're going to add a new file. We're going to modify lobby.html so that it requests a JavaScript file externally called main.js. And we're going to host that file on our file system as well. Inside that JS file will be code, JavaScript code, that will read the URL and will we'll get that information so that we can use that. And, and for to demonstrate that, we're going to um, put it into the body of lobby.html. So lobby.html will be loaded, and then it will request main.js so that it can finish being rendering. Main.js will come back, and lobby will be able to render now. And we'll now be able to, main.js will have code in it that's able to read username and djp3 out of the IRI, IRI the parameters there. First step. After that, we're going to have we're going to modify lobby.html so it requests a second library, not just main.js. The second library is called socket.io, and that's not going to be hosted by our our file system. It's going to be hosted by the socket.io um, host, you know, the the organization that has socket.io. But we're going to request it, and once we get socket.io, that's going to additionally give us the information to communicate not just through the IRI with the server but directly using WebSockets and messages. So once we have all of that code loaded in lobby.html, we can create messages. For example, when someone clicks on an element on the web page, we can create a message using the mechanism in socket.io. We can send that through our web browser back to the server. The server can see the information that we're sending, maybe messages, maybe chat messages, for example, first time around, and the server We'll receive that message, see that it's a chat message, and we'll send it out to all of the different browsers that are communicating at one time. And so that, is, those message, that message will come back from the server to the web browser, and then the code can look at that message and change its presentation, change its document object model in response. It, in fact, it's going to make it look like there's chat messages coming back and forth. Now, this is just one, one web browser. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow server.js to broadcast that message to all the web browsers that are currently communicating with it. So the result will be that two web browsers will be out there on the internet. They'll load the code that we've made. And the message will be sent from one web browser. It's going to go through the server. But the server is immediately going to broadcast it to all the other web browsers making it look like the web browser just talked directly to the other web browser, and then that one can respond back. Now, it will go through the server, but it's going to appear like it's going directly back and forth using the mechanisms of the files that we have just built in. All right, Server will forward messages, make it appear as if the browsers are talking directly to each other. That's the basic idea of how we're going to build out this next little bit. Key points here. Two bra for two browsers to play a game, they've got to be able to send data back and forth. We're going to start demonstrating and building that technology by making a chat client so that browsers, users in the browsers can type chat messages and chat back and forth. Later, we're going to adjust it so those, those messages aren't text messages, but they're data that's being sent about the game back and forth. All right, thanks for your attention. Let's dig in and actually build this thing.